Welcome, teenagers, young boys and young ladies uh, to this uh, junior church service. We pray God will bless us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness. We thank you for allowing us to be in your church, O oh God, and to hear your word. As we start, Lord, to praise, as we start to hear your word, teach us, O oh Lord, your word. We pray all this, believing in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We welcome our praise team to sing for us, and then we go to our lesson. Natengeneza safina yangu natengeneza nikaendani Natengeneza safina yangu natengeneza nikaendani Natengeneza safina yangu natengeneza nikaendani Natengeneza safina today for the boys and girls, the junior church service. Um, I want to ask a question today. Supposing, how would you feel if your parent, your father or your mother, an auntie or a guardian comes and tells you that you have done a very good thing where everybody had not done the right thing. For example, if you are not told not to watch bad movies, and when the, ch the other children started watching bad movies, you warned them, and when they refused, you decided to go out of that room. And your father comes and finds that you obeyed his word. He will be very happy. And when he uh, appreciates you, how would you feel? you'd feel you have done something very nice. Or perhaps your parents say, okay, we are leaving you at home, and you have to do your homework, you have to study, and when you tell your other uh, brothers or sisters to do what your dad said or your mom said, and they refuse, they go out, and you remain doing your work, and when your dad comes back and finds you doing your work, and he's very proud, he's becomes very proud of you, how would you feel? Definitely, you would feel very nice. But now, just imagine. You know, 
God is so pleased with you out of all the young people. How would you feel? Wow, you really feel nice. If it's me, I would really, really feel good. So today, we are going to learn about one person that God was pleased with and why he was pleased with, pleased with him. So I will read very fast from the Bible so that because of time, and then we will see why God loved this person. We are, our reading today is from Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 22. Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 22, and I'm going to read from NIV version. I'll be explaining as I read so that we can be able to understand. Now, verse 1 starts, when human beings began to increase in number on earth, and daughters were born of them to them, the sons of God saw that daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married many, uh, some of them, and they chose. Then Lord said, my spirit is not content with human forever. They are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. You know, when we were created, you know, you can remember, yeah? people like Abraham, people like Noah, people like uh, Isaac, you know, they lived many, many years. But here we are seeing that human beings decided to become disobedient, and God was not very happy. And so he said, no, I will, you'll not be living very many years. You'll just live 120 years. Let's go to verse 4. Then there were people called Nephilim. Nephilim were actually people who were believed to be like, actually they were giant-like, they were big, you know, on earth in those days. I continue. And also afterwards, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old men of renown. Verse 5. The Lord saw how great, <clears throat> how great the wickedness of human race had become on earth, and that every inclination of thoughts of human heart was evil at all the time. The Lord regretted and that he had made human beings on earth and his heart was deeply troubled. You know, God was feeling bad that, you know, people were doing the wrong things, they were not doing the right thing. Let's continue quickly. Verse 6, he says, Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and in them the animals, the birds, and the creatures, and move along the, the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But, listen to that, verse 8, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now let's find out, why did Noah find favor in the eyes of the Lord? Verse 9 says, then God, this is account of Noah and his family. He says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. He walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Ham and Japheth. So why was God, why did Noah find favor with God? We are told, one, he was a righteous man. What is being a righteous man? Being a righteous man is obeying is listening, and not only listening, but obeying, and not only obeying, but doing what God tells you to do. And so God was very happy. And even he says, Father, that he was the best among all the people of that time, you know? And then they say he walked faithful with God. How do you walk faithfully with God? You walk faithfully with God by doing the things which he tells us to do in the Bible. Like, for example, he say, love one another. For example, he says, do not steal. For example, he says, do not, you know, harm others or do not kill. That is what being uh, faithful with God. So we are told that Noah had three sons, Ham, Jap and Japheth, and Shem. Verse 11, let's go very quickly. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become 
for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both of them, that is the earth and the people. Verse 14, it says, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch. What is pitch? Pitch is like tar. You know the tar you see on the, on the, on the, on the, on the road? And when you put that tar along the, so he was telling the Noah to put it along, and when he makes the ark, our ark is like a big boat, you know? And you know the story of Noah. So when you put that tar there, when water comes, it will not leak in, okay? And so that is what God explained to, uh, to Peter. Now, to Noah, sorry. Then, verse 15, he says, this is how you are going to build it. And then God explains and tells Noah how he is going to, to, uh, to, to build it. Let us go to verse 17. He says, I am going to bring flood waters on earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath, life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. Now, God is saying, okay, I'm going to destroy everybody. Remember, from the word go, he said, go, he said God was a, uh, Noah was a what? A righteous man. So, God now is telling Noah, I'm going to destroy everybody, but except you. You know, I'm going to put a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between somebody. So God was telling Noah, I'm not going to destroy you. I'm putting a covenant with you. Let's go to verse 19. He says, you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female. And he says, we go to 21, I give us 21. You have to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Verse 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. You see, now that's the beauty of Noah. And this is what we learn today. Why was God happy with Noah? You know, why did God destroy everybody and every creature and everything except Noah? And so God was so good, he even told Noah how to survive. And that is how when you obey God, he, he, he tells us and he helps us to survive in this world we are in. Even when things are bad, when things are tough, God in a way, he will just save you. Just like the way he said to, to Noah. So God loves righteous people. God loves the people who do the right thing. And it's my prayer today that you will do what the word of God tells us to do. Our memory verse will come from the same book, actually the same scripture, Genesis chapter 6, verse 22. He says, Noah did everything just as command, God commanded him. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. I pray that you will be obedient. Not only obedient to your parents, obedient, you be obedient to your teachers, and be obedient to God. How do you become obedient to God? By listening to his word. How do you become obedient to God? By doing what his word says. May God bless you, and may God richly uh, increase you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for loving, uh, for loving each one of us, O Heavenly Father. I pray that, Lord, these children, Lord, will continue hearing your word, obeying your word, and doing your word. That, Lord, you'll continue, Lord, just like the way you loved uh, Noah, you'll continue loving them, and you'll continue saving them. We pray all this, believing in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we all say, Amen. God bless you. Till next Sunday, God bless you. Thank you.